your hitting sessions then? Is it just all with your long drive club? Do you hit like maybe like an iron or something to warm up? Or is it just like basically slower, more controlled swings with that club? Yeah, when I first got into it, um, I would just hit drivers, honestly. I think a part of me, I was a little worried about, you know, how the iron swing is obviously a little different than the driver swing. One's a little bit more negative attack yeah. angle. One's a little bit more staying back positive. Um, but, uh, but you know, I started watching a lot of different guys and seeing what some other guys were doing. And um, so now what I do is I'll start with a wedge. And uh, it's also, it gives me a little bit of like actual wedge practice because that's the big part of my golf game. <laughs> that's kind of, that's went away is those, uh, those scoring wedge shots. So <laughs> I'll gotcha. hit probably like the first third or 40 balls just uh really just trying to hit basically warm up the wrists and the arms and the body and just get used to hitting the golf ball but also try and you know hit yardages 40 60 80 yards mixing you know the 60 56 52 so i kind of use it as like a double a little bit of a golf practice but just sort of get the general body uh warmed up and then usually what i do is i sort of graduate to like a five iron um partially because if my five iron breaks i don't really care about it i don't really use it um when i'm out on the course <laughs> i usually take that one out of the bag but and I'll just, I'll try and, uh, I'll try and, you know, swing five irons until I get it up to like a speed that I'm usually, I know I'm is, is usually near my top speed with a five iron. And, uh, and I also feel like it kind of just helps my ball striking right now. I've been dealing with a little bit of, uh, an over the top sort of fade move. Um, and so I've been really trying to hit more of like a high draw and that's the plan this off season is to kind of learn that high draw shot. And, um, I'm pretty gotcha. good with my irons with it. It's just a little, a little bit of an adjustment off the tee. So trying to translate my iron swing into my driver swing a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. but then once I feel like I'm good to go, I'll, I'll hit a couple of play drivers. So like a 45 inch, you know, golf driver essentially, and just try and, yeah. you know, try and smooth it out, but sort of gradually get a little bit faster and faster until eventually I feel like I'm good to go. And then, um, you know, we'll, we'll pull out the long driver and that's when we'll start the, the real session of, of trying to hit the balls and, and track the speeds and the flights and depending on what we're trying to work on that day. Yeah. Are you a lot now that you're like, you're more in that routine of it, you're really like really tuned in with what those numbers are then? like the launch angle and your club head speed and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. That was, um, that was one thing again, that was, that was new to me too. And and you really dive into the science of, especially long drive. I mean, that's the top guys. They have all those numbers dialed in. Um, and mm -hmm. it's not even just, uh, they have like a baseline, you know, there's the, every guy's got sort of really good baseline numbers for what works for them in terms of ball flight, launch conditions, all that sort of stuff. But another thing mm -hmm. that I quickly learned this year was you also need to adapt that for the grid that you're hitting on. Um, you know, if you're hitting at elevation or, um, you know, depending on the type of grass that we're hitting on or where, you know, unfortunately not all the grids we hit on are, are, uh, are flat. So, or sorry, not flat. So that, you know, you got to find the certain spots and you got to figure out, you know, what kind of landing angle you want going into a certain hill so you mm. can get it to kick. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that go in, but, um, but yeah, so I ended up getting a, a flight scope unit this year and, uh, it's, it's done wonders for me to be able just to track generally what my normal baseline numbers are so I can figure out my speeds and make sure I'm in a good spot. But then, you know, as, uh, as I very quickly learned, depending on the grid and the conditions, making sure that I can kind of make those adaptations on the range prior to the event. And then it's just going out and executing the shot. But, uh, but yeah, you gotta be very conscious. It's not, uh, not just stand up there, grip it and rip it. Uh, it'll get, that'll get you to a point, but then yeah. eventually when, if you're trying to knock <laughs> off the top guys who have all that stuff dialed in, um, you know, if it's, if you're both at the same speed, but one guy's got a way better flight than the other, you don't really stand a chance. So, yeah. So when you go to these events, if it's multi-day, is it, do they like move where the T is so that the grid changes slightly or is it the same day to day? No, it's, it's usually the same day to day, um, which makes it nice. Mm -hmm. Um, most of the, most of the grids we hit on, they'll either, they'll build some sort of T block or they'll lay down turf and stuff. So we're not necessarily tearing up the grass or anything. So, um, gotcha. you can go in and hit on, hit on the same, uh, the same surface every single day, which is, which is nice. Um, obviously, you know, depending on weather conditions and stuff that can definitely play a factor. The wind is usually like the biggest thing that plays a factor, yeah. but, um, uh, and then the moisture in the air too, if you're in a spot, maybe it, like we, we were in Memphis, I think the one, uh, to start the season actually. And it like torrentially downpoured the night before the event. Um, wow. it's not completely changes how you're going to approach it. Right. Normally Memphis, you're thinking it's going to be hot and dry. So maybe you're hitting a little bit of a lower launch to try and get some rollout. But very quickly it was like, all right, let's get there. Let's turn up the drivers a little bit. And we're trying to hit some higher launch and just carry it essentially. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just really just trying to adapt and, uh, and just like sort of be conscious of, of kind of what those conditions look like. But thankfully from like a teeing ground perspective, um, it stays pretty consistent day to day, which, which is nice. Cool. What's like the, the stats on your driver then? Like what's the loft and the, like what length is the, the shaft? 
else? Yeah, so everything we use has to be USGA conforming. I think sometimes that's uh, mm. a little bit of a surprise to people. I know back a handful of years, before, well before I got into the sport, they used to use up to like 50-inch drivers, I think, so they had like the extra long ones. But uh, but now everything that we have to use is USGA conforming, including the heads and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I usually I try and max it out at the 48 inches. Um, and, uh, and then I, I use the Callaway, uh, paradigm long drive head, so which is a, a static, uh, four degrees or four and a half degree head. Um, I wow. unfortunately don't hit it as high as some of the other guys. So I usually actually play it up a couple degrees. So I'll play it five and a half or six and a half, depending on what I'm trying to do. Um, I'm kind of a low launch, low spin. So I, I, at first when I joined, I wanted to be like the minus two and, uh, and play it at like two and a half degrees, like the same loft as your putter type thing. But <laughs> I very quickly yeah, yeah. started hitting these really low knuckleballs that just didn't go anywhere more uncontrollable so um <laughs> but yeah so i played Callaway paradigm long drive head um i'm using a, a kinetics patterson shaft which is about 58 gram shaft which uh that's another thing i think people are always surprised about when i talk to them they, they expect us to be swinging these 4x light poles which back when i first yeah. joined the sport in 2019 for a second that's what we were using i think my first shaft was probably like a 3x uh like 70 or 80 gram shaft but um, the last few mm-hmm. years, a lot of the manufacturers have really advanced their technologies and the materials that go into these shafts, and they're just trying to build them lighter and lighter. Um, I'm sure you've seen some of the stuff on social media with some of the guys just using these absolute like wet noodles um, for shafts. But yeah. the idea is just to basically generate as much power and as much lag and and then basically kick it at the bottom, um, which is great for generating a lot of speed. Unfortunately, your dispersion usually uh, suffers a little bit. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so a lot of guys, you know, some guys will use very, very light stuff. Some guys will use sort of a medium. Uh, you don't see too many guys using a heavy setup anymore, but it's usually somewhere in between that a lot of guys will, will sort of use for competition. Um, so I found like 58 grams is kind of that sweet spot for me where I can control it enough, but still also get that extra, that extra club head speed. Cool. Yeah. What, what do you, what would you say is like your average drive with just like a standard, like 11 degree driver then like compared to the long drive? Yeah. If I was using 11 degrees, it would probably be very spinny and kind of just go straight up in the air. I don't know if I could get an 11 degree more than like 250 (laughs) yards, but, um, but when I'm playing on the course, usually I'll take like a nine degree or an eight and a half degree head and I'll turn it down to like six and a half, seven and a half. So I'll tune it down a little bit. Gotcha. Um, but I would say stock when I'm playing on the course, um, I'm probably about 350 ish. I would say probably, um, Mm-hmm. I probably hover around like 200 ball speed if I'm just, you know, cruising on the course. I've tried to dial it back, but it starts to get to a point where you then sort of lose your swing and you lose your mechanics and your control and you start mm-hmm. flipping at it and hitting, you know, hooks and that sort of stuff. So usually like 200 seems to be that comfortable number for me that I can kind of control it enough. Um, yeah. But, uh, but you know, still not feel like I'm, you know, basically losing my, uh, uh, losing any sort of intention to kind of hit the ball. Um uh, but yeah, so I'd say probably about 340, 350 is kind of where I'm at, uh, off the T stock, um, just with a typical play driver. Gotcha. Cool. How often do you get out for just a regular round of golf? Do you still get in rounds or like when you get in, like probably like leading up to events, you're probably just focusing on hitting sessions, but do you still like, I guess also, is it, are you able to go out and just like, and enjoy a regular round of golf or do you, is it like tough mentally to step back and and just play? Yeah, really good question. Um, it definitely changed a lot this year. So like I said, um, you know, when I first moved to Buffalo, I really focused on my golf game and, you know, I probably got down to like a low single digit, maybe like a one or two handicap. Um, but for me, that was like the best golf I was playing, um, right before I started the long drive thing. And then, um, you know, unfortunately my job's a little bit busier. Um, so, you know, the amount of free time that I had, I kind of had to commit to either golf or long drive. Um, and, uh, mm-hmm. I quickly realized, uh, like I said, playing in some competitive golf events here in, in Buffalo that I was never going to make any money playing golf. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so you know what I was like, at least, at least maybe I can make something of the long drive thing. So basically any of the free time I have now, I commit it to long drive, um, and, you know, basically range sessions. And so I, I joke with people that, you know, I probably hit more golf balls than most people, you know, this summer, but I think I only carded maybe three or four rounds total. Um, but you know, <laughs> any chance I get to get out there and play some holes, I'll definitely do it. I think, um, you know, I noticed this year, uh, the first couple of rounds I played, I just, I didn't have the same game that I used to. And it was always very frustrating. Um, again, you know, when you're used to being able to hit those scoring sort of wedge shots, um, after 
after, you know, taking, take, to take advantage of like a big drive, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. when you, when you don't have that finesse, you're not working on dialing in those numbers, you very quickly lose that part of your game. Um, so I started to get very frustrated early this season when I was playing and then, you know, it kind of just hit me that it's like, you know what, you just got to go out there and enjoy it. Um, especially being up here in the Northeast, mm-hmm. you know, the golf season's not that long. So, you know, when yeah. you're out there with your buddies and the weather's great, um, you know, there's very, there's a lot of worse places to be than out on the golf course. Even, you know, a bad day of golf is a, is better than a good day of a lot of other things. So, so now my yeah, mindset's kind of sure. changed, you know, I'll just go out there and whether I'm just playing a couple holes, uh, late at night in the evening or actually going out for a round. Uh, my goal is just to go out there and enjoy it and make sure that everybody I'm playing with, uh, enjoys the round too. And like I tell people, it's, uh, you know, you're going to see some great shots, but you're going to see some really bad shots, but we're going <laughs> to have a lot of fun doing it. So now, uh, that's sort of my mindset now. And when, when I get to tee it up, it's just going out there, enjoy it, enjoy the social aspect of it. Cool. Yeah. Do you do a lot of like, I guess like just charity scrambles and stuff like that and just go out there and, and hit bombs or do you try to not and focus more on, on practicing? Maybe you used to, but now like taking it long drive more seriously as it kind of shifted a bit. Yeah, we used to, um, for, for my job, we used to get to agree to get to go out to uh, some different charity scrambles. Um, and so that was always fun and, and I do enjoy those. And I, I usually, you know, when people see me on the range, they're always like, Oh, we'd love to use you on your, on our, our charity scramble team. <laughs> Yeah. Um, not as much anymore. I, I will say one thing that's really opened my eyes to a couple of the events that I've done is, um, you know, hitting, hitting shots on a golf course is a lot different than on a range or, you know, if you're on like a, in a simulator yeah. lounge or, or hitting into a screen, um, when you get out there and you start to see the different obstacles and, you know, you've got bunkers in play and then, you know, maybe you're on a course where you've got other golfers going up and down the adjacent fairways. It starts to, it starts to get into your mind yeah. a little bit, but it, it, it's good practice. I will say, um, to get out there and, um, you know, because there, there comes times in competition where all you need is just a ball in the grid. And it's a lot easier said than done, especially with all the adrenaline and the music pumping. But um, sometimes what it takes is to just sort of dial things back and just be like, hey, let's hit a golf shot and find a fairway. And uh, so those charity events and charity scrambles um, are definitely a good chance to, to practice being able to go out and just execute a, a fairway finder or a grid finder. Yeah, it's got to be tough at times because, again, having that – the just less loft and everything like it's probably not very forgiving and so the misses are probably pretty far offline at times too i'm sure yeah i always say that to people you know they're always people are always like oh i wish i had your speed and distance i'm like well it's a blessing and a curse i think you know because if (laughs) if you and i are both teeing it up and i don't know how far you hit it maybe you maybe you bomb it but if if i'm teeing up with somebody and uh, and we're both off the same degree with our driver they might just be just off the fairway in the rough but i'm a hole over <laughs> now i'm now i'm i'm waiting <laughs> down the other group be like hey that's my ball over there so um yeah and i think that's one of the things that just doesn't get appreciated enough i think about long drive um you know it's always people talking about how you know maybe we don't have a short game all that sort of stuff but i think one of the things that people really need to appreciate is um is how exact we have to be I, I, you know our grids typically are around 50 yards which is is wide but it's not too wide you know we're not talking about 100 yeah. yards wide kind of thing so you still got to be relatively precise but at 220 ball speed 150 club head speed to make sure you square up and, and you get the right face to path um it, it takes you know it takes a lot of a lot of skill to do that um and uh but you know on the bright side one of the entertaining things that i always tell people about long drive events if you get a chance to go is, is some of the misses are just wild um especially at the events where we don't necessarily care we've got six balls we don't we just need that one some of the misses you see are just absolutely, you know, all over the place. And I think that's also some of the entertainment aspect. And at first I used to let that bother me. You know, if you hit a really bad hook or you slice one into, you know, a, a different country, that kind of thing. Uh, but now I'm just so numb to it. That is just, all right, you know, we're teeing up the next one before that ball even lands. So, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, like I said, it's uh, it's definitely a blessing and curse. And to be honest, when I'm playing golf, I don't even pull up the driver that much. I'm, I'm mostly a two iron off the tee for the most part, just because again, uh, I'm just trying to be so precise with, uh, with my path and face, because if it starts to get off a little bit, then, uh, we're in for a long day. So, yeah, <laughs> that's what I do. I, I rarely hit driver. I normally just hit my three hybrid cause I hit it nearly as far. I'm not like a long ball hitter. Gary's the long ball hitter. Cause he was a baseball pitcher okay. and stuff. And I just, I'm there for the wedges and the approach shots more so than the the long balls. Thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms.
Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.